everything is expensive, unnecessarily complex, or time wasting for an EV. Charging for eight hours when petrol cars just need five minutes at pump. Door handles that's electrically operated, which pose a danger during an emergency. And the batteries will spontaneously catch fire. Oh, even this. When we need special EV tyres that are more expensive to buy and still wear out faster? I mean, I keep seeing these comments brought up again and again by EV haters in Facebook groups, uh, Reddit threads, and even in my videos. In fact, after seeing these comments repeated dozens of times, even I started wondering myself, is there a difference or not? Now, in the past video, I have attempted to dispel the myths of EV charging. So in this video, let me address another myth. Are uh, EV tyres a scam? Yeah, on Facebook, Telegram and Reddit, and even on my YouTube videos like I mentioned, right, we always see people saying the same thing. They say, ah yeah, EV tyres and normal tyres are the same one. Uh, just marketing nonsense. Only EV owners are gullible enough to get EV tires. So honestly, uh, we, uh, the EV owners, just paying extra because the tire companies know EV owners are more willing to spend? Or are the naysayers right all along? In fact, I went to watch another video about those uh, so-called EV tires, and the conclusion was uh, the difference is just a single digit percentage, and it's not worth the cost to do so for most EV owners. So I thought I'm going to see it for myself by doing something simple and honest. Now I'm going to take uh, the tyres currently on my BYD seal here, test record some parameters and then compare them against some new EV tyres and then again on uh, some normal tyres or non-EV specific tyres. And we're going to test whether there's any real world difference among those three sets. Hence, if EV tyres are really just a gimmick, we'll find out. And if the differences are small, we'll find out. And if the differences are obvious, then at least all of us will know for sure. Not because the haters say so, but because we actually tested it. Before we start, if you enjoy content like this one and you want me to keep doing these uh, car owner type of videos, and not the journalistic reviews, right? Well, do take two seconds to hit like, subscribe, and share this video, okay? It really helps support the channel and let me continue uh, making more content for you, regardless of what the naysayers say, all right? So thank you so much for your support. And now, uh, the first thing we have to establish is the context to why there's a need to do this video in the first place. Now you see, there are three big differences uh, that an EV tyre will need to address. And the first one is EVs are heavier. Now some of the higher end models are 2.5 tonnes in weight. And do you know that the Cybertruck is like 3,100 kilograms? Now that's because of the battery pack, which adds a few hundred kilos. Now that weight transfers to the tyres, uh, which means more heat, more pressure, and more wear. So second, EVs have instant torque. Now when we depress the accelerator uh, on an EV, the power arrives immediately. There's no gear shifting, uh, no delay, and that instant punch right, can potentially shred a soft tire very quickly over time. Especially if we do jackrabbit sprints uh, at the traffic light all the time. Third, and this is especially important to me, noise. Even when I wasn't driving EVs in the past, this was a big factor for me when I shopped for tyres. I frequently chose the Michelin's uh, PS5s and Bridgestone Tourenses on my cars that were better insulated, like uh, my Honda Odyssey, uh, the BMW 730, and uh, also the uh, Mercedes GLC Coupe in the past. And these are quiet cars already. And EVs, right, can be even quieter. So tire noise will become very obvious uh, because with ICE cars, the engine 
will still mask the noise. And with EVs, aside from uh, wind noise at higher speed, all you hear is the tire hum. So I want to test if uh, EV tires address those three challenges. But before we continue, I want to be fully transparent. Now, this video is sponsored by Tire Private Limited. They are a tire shop and the sole distributor of Lhasa Tires, which is a brand of EV tires that honestly, I've never heard of before. So naturally, I'm a bit wary because it is not a familiar brand like uh, Pirelli, uh, Continental, Goodyear, Michelin, or Bridgestone. Now, in fact, the tire isn't even the so-called lesser and more affordable brands like Hankook, uh, Toyo, and Kamho. Now, I was wondering with all those never before uh, heard tires that can be bought off Taobao and Lazada today, right? Am I going to get some tires that just have some EV ready markings imprinted on the sidewall? Anyway, if you dare to sponsor this video, potentially getting tens of thousands of people to watch, I reckon they won't dare to ruin their reputation, right? So as per all the sponsors and collaborators uh, to my videos, I told them this. I am going to do this test honestly. Now, if the tire is noisy, I'm going to say it's noisy. If it feels the same as my current tires, I'll just say it. And if there's an improvement, I'll show the data. They have zero control over what I say. So what you're watching later in this video, good or bad, is 100% what I experience. So let's start with the first test on my current tires for the noise and comfort. So my current stock tires are the GT um, Comfort 225 V1. Uh, they have been on my car since I took delivery about 15 months and uh, around 15,400 kilometers ago. Uh, frankly, I'm quite impressed with their quietness. At low speeds of 50 to 60 kilometers per hour, depending on the condition of the road, noise level is typically around the same as normal speaking volume. The decibel meter on my phone says it's between 50 to 60 dBs. And at highway speeds of uh, 80 to 90 km per hour, the road hum starts coming through, though it is not obvious if you don't purposely look for it. For the meter wise, well, it shows it's uh, between 60 to 70 dB. Now, this is in the range of, well, noise. It's generally not noticeable if you are playing your Spotify in the car and if your car is not uh, acoustically shielded, uh, the wind noise will sort of drown out the road noise also. Now, by the way, if you are criticizing me for using my iPhone for noise measurement, right? Just take it that this is a layman test. I mean, I will be also using this phone and this app to measure the after change segment also. So what I'm looking for is really the difference. The next thing I want to show you here, which the camera doesn't really capture it that well, is the vibration when I do a zero to 50 kilometers per hour sprint. So this footage was uh, captured with my action camera's stabilization turned off. Now in the car, I don't really feel that vibration, probably because I'm on the fantastic seats in the seal. But this is how it looks like with the chassis of the car vibrating. Next, I'll test on the energy efficiency. Uh, I'll be using the car's meters for the reading and uh, I'll be driving around a uh, designated road that is around 60% expressway and 40% on smaller roads uh, for both the before and later the after tests. Uh, and it will take around one hour to drive this 50 km route. And I'll start my journey at the same time, which is at 4.15 p.m., though on different weekdays. So using the same route, the same driving pattern, the same load in the car, which is me and my cameraman, and hopefully a largely similar uh, traffic and weather condition, I'll record the battery percentage use and the kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers for the current tires. And so for this 
before test of my GT tires. After slightly more than an hour of drive, I've clocked 67% minus 56% for an approximate total of 11% of battery used. And for the energy efficiency, right, the reading is 12.2 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So these are the baseline figures for noise and energy efficiency on my stock tires. Next, let's perform the first after test. Uh, and to do so, let's head down to uh, Caro Center where Tire Private Limited is located. Now, if you're wondering, they are really called Tire Private Limited. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, they are the exclusive distributor of Lhasa EV tires in Singapore. So as I get my tires changed to the Lhasa tires here, let me share what I found out about this brand because I'm sure you have never heard of it either. Now personally, I'm surprised that Lhasa is not actually a small or unknown company in the global tire industry. It comes from Brisa, one of Europe's largest tire manufacturer uh, based in Turkey. And here's the surprising part because uh, Brisa is actually a joint venture between the Sabanchi Group of Turkey and the Bridgestone Corporation of Japan. Yes, that Bridgestone. So behind the Lhasa name is a big partnership representing tier one tire quality, combining Japanese precision with Turkish innovation. And in any case, right, even if this brand seems new to me, Lhasa tires are selling in over 70 countries and it had been around for decades. Now they supply to fleet operators, motorsport categories and uh, European uh, commercial sector, which I take it that uh, durability, grip, heat tolerance and safety are real performance KPIs, not marketing lines. And these Lhasa tyres that are fitted on my car now, specifically the Competers HP3 model, uh, they are engineered with uh, reinforced sidewalls, uh, low rolling resistant compounds, heat resistant rubber formulation, and noise optimized tread patterns. Now these uh, HP3 are designed to handle the higher torque and heavier weight that EVs naturally produce and reduce braking distance in both dry and wet conditions. Yet they are supposed to be comfort buyers and at the same time help in energy efficiency. So I reckon that even though the brand isn't as mass marketed in Singapore, the engineering behind it seems to be extremely legit. Not just some rebranded ice tires, good especially for drivers like me who want proper EV tires without paying Michelin or uh, Continental prices. Oh, what about the price? Let me share at the end of the video. So now the Lhasa tires have been balanced, fitted and inflated to spec. I kind of feel that the sidewall seems stronger and the tread block uh, is like stiffer, but this could be psychological. Anyway, the more important stuff is the after test. So off I go, back to the starting point of the test routes. Oh, in case you're wondering, right, the remaining battery charge won't make a difference in uh, this test because this is an EV, not an ICE car where the weight of the petrol in a tank will matter. This is just a friendly note to some non-EV drivers who are still watching at this point in the video, attempting to look for faults. So after driving for around an hour on the same uh, before route, the first thing that I noticed is actually the road noise. Uh, with the Lhasa tyres, right, the low speed noise is noticeably softer. At 50 to 60 km per hour, the decibel meter reads an impressive 38 to 40 dBs. And at 80 to 90 km per hour on the same expressway routes, the hum appears to be less sharp and the cabin actually feels calmer. And on the meter, right, it reads a surprisingly low 40 to 45 dBs. Now, frankly, this is not a super obvious difference to my human ears, but you can see that there's a lot of difference on the meters. And for the acceleration test, uh, this is the footage taken for the 0 to 50 sprints. And here they are again, side by side. I mean, when I was driving the car, I don't really feel uh, any difference. But on the recording, right, it seems like there's a little bit more vibration on the OGT, right? But what do you think? Next, the energy efficiency test. 
after driving through the same exact route uh, at the same time in the afternoon with a relatively similar traffic and weather condition, uh, here are the readings. Now, the battery percentage used is 88% minus 78% for a total of 10%. And the energy efficiency achieved in this test is at 11.9 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. Now, compared to the before figures, we have gained some improvements. Not earth shattering kind of difference, but I would take it that there is improvement overall. Because even small gains like this matter, translating into a longer range, a lower running costs, and better long distance efficiency. So after this test, let's answer the big question. Are EV tyres a scam? Well, I cannot conclusively answer this question yet because I still have another test to do, which is the one with non-EV tyres. But what I can say for now is something that uh, we couldn't record on camera, which is the fuel. I mean, for tyres, right, grip is something that's uh, really important, especially when the roads are wet. So for my old tyres, dry grip had uh, been sufficient and as shown in the sprint test earlier, right, there's no tyre slip. I mean, my seal Dynamic isn't exactly a sports car to begin with, so dry grip wasn't a worry for me. But wet grip was something that I had an incident before on the old GT tyres. Now the car was cruising on ACC on a rainy day, and when it cruised over some standing water, it felt like there was some uh, aquaplaning, and the tyres slipped a bit. Now it wasn't a skid, but there was a um, a momentary slip that caused the car to turn a little bit. So on these tyres, uh, these Lhasa tyres so far, right, web grip is okay. I mean, it's still very new and uh, barely clocked a few hundred kilometres uh, as at the time of this recording. But comfort-wise, it's quite apparent that the new Lhasa tyre come out as the better of the two. Now it's quieter, uh, the vibration over unevenly patched roads feel uh, noticeably less, and it saves more energy as we've seen in the test. And at the wallet-friendly price starting from $99 for 15 inch uh, up to 20 inches, EV owners can really save quite a lot. Sure, it's not branded, but hey, my BYD isn't too. And many of us EV drivers, we chose our cars because we know value when we see one without compromising on uh, features, performance and safety. And this is exactly what uh, these Lasha tyres um, represent too. Because aside from the comparatively lesser known branding, these tyres take every feature that EV tyres need. Uh, superior wet grip, improved energy efficiency, better braking performance, uh, unmatched driving comfort, and extended wear life. And they are not premium price. What's more, the first 10 viewers who quote learns when you shop for your Lhasa tyres at Tyre Private Limited will get a set of gifts specially prepared for you for Stock Plus. And even if you're not ready to change your tyres yet, you're welcome to drop down to their shop to find out more about their tyres and rims. Oh, another group who should also consider dropping by are those of you who are just taking delivery of your new rides. Now, if you swap your new tyres and rims with the even newer and more competent Lhasa ride, Tyre Private Limited will take in your rims at a great price. And for the non-EV drivers watching who are planning to change to even more wallet-friendly tyres, Tyre Private Limited also has another range for you. Now the brand is Beecher, which is perfect if you just want a value for money set of tyres with good grip. Ask Tyre Private Limited for this range too and tell them that Colin from Learns sent you. So regardless, thank you for watching all the way to this point of the video. Do subscribe because I will be putting up part two of this video comparing the non-EV tyres with my Lasha. Remember to also like and share this video with your car owner friends. Thank you to Hire Private Limited for sponsoring this video again and I'll see you in the next one.